Hello and welcome to World of Tanks again. We are back and I'm going to show you a replay from a lovely tank that I adore a lot. Now, it sits at a sweet spot. Most tank trees get good. Typically, you start having the most fun in World of Tanks when you hit tier 5. That's when you start seeing heavy tanks more often than not. Um, you are more likely to be top tier as well. Um, but aside from that, this tank is an, is a Russian tier 5 tank destroyer called the SU-85. It's a tank destroyer SU-85 developed on the basis of the T-34 medium tank and the SU-122 assault gun. Now, the reason why it's based on the T-34 medium tank, which I will show you right now, based on this tank, as you can see, the hull is very similar shape. Now, uh, the Russians had to face the, uh, what was it? They, they've had to face, you know, the German tanks, right? And so they said, well, we need a bigger gun, but they didn't have a good enough turret uh, to mount the, the gun on. And uh, so they stuck, with the, they stuck a bigger gun into this hull and, and, put it, and made the SU-85. Now, once they were able to better, make a better turret, then they were able to make the SU-85, which uses the gun that the, um, the uh, SU-85 uses. And the characteristics are that it has 144 uh, millimeters penetration, which is really good for a tier 5 tank. 180 uh, damage, average, uh, and the uh, premium ammunition is armor-piercing, composite rigid APCR gold rounds. Um, 194 is pretty good because considering you're mostly going to face, uh, you know, tier 3s, you can face tier 3s, or you can face even up to tier 7, which for instance, the most heavily armored tanks at that tier actually let me head over here so I'm gonna be a little end of analysis on that so you're facing that uh that's 120 degrees of hull armor uh sloped it's good. like if, if if a person knows how to angle their armor they can make that effective hull armor more than that but there are weak spots uh some of the black prints that's 152 hull armor 240 turret so you're facing this with this gun, which is the top gun, get it, use it, master it. Um, I would shoot gold at this unless you have a weak, uh, you can aim at the weak spot, like the where the hole is flush or flat. Uh, you'd also be facing the AT7, which is 203 hole armor, but you, we all know that the very top part right there is uh, vulnerable. Um, and let's see, tier 7 uh, German heavy tank, the Tiger, uh, that's a joke. With 100 hull armor. Tiger P, 200 in frontal hull armor might be easier, but then again, you have 100 for the for the turret. So, regardless, this tank will be punching serious holes into enemies, even though it is bottom tier. That's what I love about it. Um, I don't mind tier threes that you know that are lower than me with this tank, obviously, and I really and I don't mind being bottom tier either, because I get to punch holes in bigger tanks and deal more damage. With time. So what I'm going to show you is, I mean, you, you know, you, you can actually get a, a sense of what the what the performance is based on this. Uh, there's one glaring weakness. Uh, well, two. One, uh, it has no armor. Uh, this is important because even at tier five for tank destroyers, the British have their AT2, which at tier five it has 203 hull armor, right? So it's, it's kind of more like a heavy tank, but still, they call it, um, so, even at its own tier, it has paper-thin armor compared to that specific tank destroyer, at 45 hull sloped, I think it's 70 effective, because it's 45, but, you know, if, it, if you're still shooting like this, it's still going to be, like, 70, I think, and if you're, you're angling it well, which sometimes I do that, because I'm just so used to trying to angle my armor, you can go get, like, 80, I don't know, I'm not going to look it up, that's one glaring weakness. It doesn't have many hit points. The hit points are really low. Two shots, you pretty much already done more damage than your own hit points. Um, uh, rate of fire. Uh, for instance, I have 100% crew, uh, vents, and a gun rammer. 
and the actual gun reload time is still five seconds, which is actually not that bad. Um, gun traverse, uh, the gun moves pretty quickly, uh, 44 degrees a second. It, it's not fully, uh, um, you can't rotate it a lot, so you're gonna have to move the tank a lot. Uh, this is a very blind tank with 280 uh, meters view range. Very blind, 280, pretty blind, I must say. So you're gonna rely very heavily on team support. And that's the one thing that's terrible about this tank. With the AT2, you could potentially uh, fight uh, and brawl with other tanks, as long as they're not that maneuverable. This tank relies heavily on support, and uh, your team needs to be able to spot, so you need to know where the spots to be are in order to abuse, not abuse, more like exploit uh, those said spots. And so, for instance, my crew is at, uh, has three perks, this one has. So what I recommend on all TDs is that uh, commander gets six cents, everybody else gets camo. That's my way to do it. Um, then I try to get, even though really the the view range of 300 over, like like the base view range is 280 if you're like 100%, but if you have like, uh, for instance, what did I do? I think I put uh, situational awareness and recon so that I would see farther. It's only going to get up to 300. Um, signal range, that's more important actually. I should be investing in that. Uh, doesn't need a target's good. Snapshot is good. Um, what else? Uh, clutch braking is it's good too. Uh, off road driving is really good too. Um, oh, maybe repairs. I don't know. This one I put adrenaline rush and then repairs. Adrenaline rush is good, uh, especially because you need to shoot faster when you're at low, low health. And I stock up with 30 regular 6 APCR and then 2 HE. And then the cheap stuff, because, you know, I'm not that wealthy in World of Tanks. But anyways, I'm going to show you a, an Ace Tanker replay. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Find the results. I just want to find the results real quick. Where are they? Oh, I think this is it. So show results. So, Ace Tanker, uh, awarded for mastering, controlling, and armored vehicle to qualify a player must earn more experience in a battle than the average highest experience of 99% of players who have fought in the vehicle in the previous seven days. So the top 1%, uh, I think, was it the experience doubled? Yeah, but um, still with premium, and uh, it's, it ended up being 3,476. I, uh, I, did I shoot any premium? I think I did. Yeah, I must have shot three three premium rounds just to make sure it was a close match. But anyways, um, team scored, I did, I barely did less damage than that SU-100 over there. So this was a tier six match. So I was mid tier, I wasn't, you know, bottom tier or any of that. Uh, one of my uh, platoon mates, he was in the same tank, he did a lot worse. Another platoon mate didn't do that well. But anyways, this was the result screen. I, I won uh, the last person. I got Power Perfect, not a surprise. I found that one like 2,576 times. And then Top Gun for killing six enemy. But anyways, this is an Ace Tanker. And then without further ado, let's hop into this uh, replay. So, replay starts here. We have, we're on the bottom. Uh, let's see. So you can see the gun's performance down there, at the bottom. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so this is Abby. And just a little quick, wait, okay. A little quick tidbit. Uh, TDs usually camp here and here, right? And so I'm going to camp here in order to shoot down this alley because a lot of tanks typically go down this alley. Uh, my tankers are going to be speaking Russian, which is funny. Um, let's see. So I, I sit in this bush. Now let me let me uh, pause. Okay, uh, no, not free camera. Okay, so okay, free camera. I am pretty far from that bush, right? Now I zoom in. The bush is opaque. That means if I shoot and a tank is on the other side, they cannot spot me. So yeah, there we go. 
So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at the map, I'm seeing if I can shoot down that alley, that's why I'm zooming out. Yeah, I can shoot down the valley. Um, alright. I'm looking down the valley, I'm looking down, I'm looking down, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm looking at the Chaffee at Delta 5 right now. He's at Delta 5, he's gonna go in, and I'm thinking, uh, go left at, you know, Echo 5, right? I'm thinking, go left. Well, his left. And he doesn't. He spots the other chappy, and I'm thinking, okay, there's that one. Uh, our T34 already dies, uh, which was pretty quick already. And then, you know, I'm worried. You know, I'm worried. I'm thinking, all right, we already lost somebody. The chappy took a 236 damage. I'm thinking that might have been the OI experimental. That might have been the KV-5 with the 100 millimeter gun. Uh, and so I'm like, crap. All right. And then the chappy keeps going down. This is what you don't do. You don't scout like that Chappie did. You don't go really past the middle, especially, like, and I tell him, look at the chats. I said, Chappie, come back. It's kind of too late already. And so, um, he dies. Uh, not surprisingly. He did scout, but scouts are supposed to stay alive. So I'm like, crap, I will not have eyes there. So, you know what? There's nobody in the middle. Nobody in our team in the middle. So there's no point in me staying there. I'm going to get the heck back, right? I'm seeing the bottom left part of the screen. I don't. I'm not really one to tell platoon mates, "Oh, do this, don't do that," kind of stuff. So it's not. So I, I don't like bossing people around. So I'm not telling them, "Oh, you know, you guys should back up uh, or at least try to support the ram." Because if I were them, I would like. If I were the M4, I would support the ram down there. Uh, the OI experimental uh, sees that since he had since uh, the OI should have went up with the with the KV85 down on the right hand side he should have gone down with him but no he, he instead said he can't he's not a bad player but i still would have gone with them on that side instead of getting destroyed like they did so we're losing two six i'm using the bushes as concealment i have six cents so i will know when i'm spotted i'm not spotted yet it's su 100 uh gets destroyed chap is right next to me you're gonna see me yeah i got spotted it took three seconds three seconds prior to when i got the message i got spotted so you see how the gun moves really quickly. That's one way that it, it actually, it's, it's a good thing that it moves quickly is in that situation. All right, come on, let's go. Um, so there's that. Um, and so I'm constantly moving because they have a bishop. Bishop can shoot over, shoot over hills really effectively, shoot over walls in a city. So I'm thinking, you know, the bishop's probably in, in Foxtrot 5. And so I'm thinking, all right, uh, I better keep moving. I better not stay still because he might shoot at my last uh, spot of position. So it takes six minutes to get off the radar pretty much. So I'm thinking, all right, uh, I'm going to make sure. And I'm like, oh, Hellcat, crap. I uh, got to gotta protect that flank. Uh, M44, our artillery kills him in one, one shot. Not surprising since the Hellcat has no armor. The KV-85 would be an issue, though. He could potentially kill me in one shot if he has the bigger gun. The bigger gun does 390 average damage. I only have 350 health, so... More than likely, if he has the top gun, he will kill me in one shot. I'm thinking, crap, I need to make sure I'm in a good position. So I would rather camp in a bush back there, have the Hellcat spot whatever's coming, because the Hellcat has better view range. He has 370 me meters view range, while I have only 280. So I'm, I'm back here, I'm thinking, all right, let me get back, back behind this bush right here. I'm thinking, all right, uh, I see it, it's, it's, it's see-through, it, that's opaque, okay, so that's good. I'm like, eh, whatever. I already have like three crew members with 100% camo and have six cents. So I don't know if I get spotted. And so I'm like, all right, Hellcat, you're up. You're, you're, the Hellcat should have been in a bush or behind something, not just sitting there. He's going to die like an idiot. And just as I expected, the KD5 is there. I shoot at him, do 180 damage, and he doesn't move. I don't know why. The OI destroys his life. He, the Hellcat got destroyed. Uh, the KV85 ended up having the uh, 100 millimeter gun with 250 alpha damage. He's still, uh, I don't know if he high rolled that, I don't remember. But anyways, he killed the Hellcat in one shot after it was over, after the Hellcat had already been damaged. So we're 9-11, we're down, and so I'm playing very conservatively. You know, I've already done fire for effect, I've already done more damage than my health has, right? And so I'm thinking, alright. Um, I'm the only one that can spot my own targets, so there's a trick. If you spot something, you, you'll see him, but he won't see you. You can back up to where the bushes will turn opaque, and then you can shoot at him so he doesn't see you. And so the KV-1 was last spotted in Foxtrot 1. So I'm thinking he's the one who's going to come up uh, around problem, problem 3. Uh, but no, the uh, 
the the uh uh see see i was right and so i try to aim and i shoot it went right over him it went right over him i got upset because like i was like okay he's gonna go back if you know uh, uh, you know really quick so i back up i back up i i i, I go forward and then you know i, I, I back up a little bit because i want to make sure artillery doesn't get me because i'm i'm more than positive it's going to try to shoot at me uh, wow, the OI tried to shoot over me, or was it the artillery? I don't know. So Stug 3G is right there, right next to us. It's it's going to be close to Artie, so I'm thinking, all right. Um, that ricochet, I don't know how. It has 30 millimeters of side armor, so I'm thinking, what the heck? The tracks eat it. So both of those shots were very unlucky. I, he should have been dead already. So I'm I'm getting a little I'm getting a little salty, because uh, well, for one, the first shot, you know, that's understandable. I'm not too upset about that. Um, I'm a little upset that that M44 artillery and our team went all the way to their base to just like wreak havoc. He should have been back here. He could have done way more help back here than over there. So there's the stock 3G. I do some damage coming down, but I don't care. Um, my angled armor helped me deflect that shot. The second shot, I try to shoot in the side angle right there. I kill him. Uh, shot at him with like those little holes that are coming out the top. The OI experimental shows up, and I'm thinking he can he can kill that OI. I gotta save the OI. The OI is more important than I am. So I'm thinking, all right, all right, let me get a shot, let me, and then I get spotted. So I'm like, crap. He might aim at me because he might see me as an easier kill first. So I'm thinking, all right, all right. And so I'm, I'm aiming, I'm aiming, and I have to get farther forward to come back. So I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back out and go to a different angle. But the OI kills the other OI. Uh, experimental. And so then the Jumbo Sherman comes out. I'm thinking, KB1, you're probably over there. So you know what? Uh, yeah, you are over there. Let me see if I can get a shot, right? And so I'm like, all right, let me try to get the viewport at the very top. Nope, there was no way in hell that was going to get there. But you know what? I was like, you know what? I, you know, I got to at least try. got to at least try. M44 spots the bishop down there. I'm thinking, M44, you, you have your work cut out. The bishop's going to get you. Uh, but I don't say anything in chat. Uh, cause the M44 won't listen to me. He's a bad player, statistically. I'm thinking, alright, and then I shoot the, I shoot the Jumbo Sherman, not the Jumbo Sherman, the Easy A, and it bounces, and I'm thinking, crap. Uh, he's a bad player, because he's not coming after me. He could kill me in one shot, potentially. He's using the, the, the derp gun, the gun that shoots HE. I have almost no armor. He could kill me in one shot. KV1 shows up. OI is still there. Uh... Big, big crap. Don't come out, don't come out. I shoot him right in the track. Uh, he, the, the RD and our team is like upset because we're taking too long. And then it's like, you could always go back to the garage and choose another thing. You don't have to get mad. Um, and so I'm waiting for him to pop out. Come on, pop out. Um, he just spots me. He, because he has no view range pretty much. And I keep backing out of, uh, the, uh, proximity, uh, spotting distance. I think, all right. Shoot him inside. It dips. It dips. I get so upset. And so I'm thinking he can kill me right now. But he missed. Because he didn't take it enough time. And the M44 is like trying to coach me. And I'm thinking, alright. You really need to shut up. Although he did. I'm thinking he said to the uh, OI not to sit around. Which is true. And yeah, he, the OI died. Because he was just sitting there. And the bishop could so totally shoot over the, the hill that the OI was... Uh, sitting behind and so um i think for that last shot i did shoot load uh premium so it wouldn't bounce and i'm thinking all right it's just me and the artillery he's like got and cap so i'm like thinking go cap uh and then and then he's saying cap man i'm thinking no i can't cap uh not right now and so i'm thinking all right the kv1's there let me go peek over a bush i have really good stealth with my with my crew and the fact that the tank itself is very well uh, camouflaged. I don't have paint because I'm cheap and I have 122 tanks to run right now. So I'm not going to camouflage every single one of them. Uh, that's too much effort. Not even if I were to camouflage all the t tank destroyers I had that I, w I just wouldn't want to do that. It's too much, too much, uh, too many credits. So I'm thinking, all right, KV1's probably circling around. It's probably trying to come at a different angle, trying to catch me off guard. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm, I'm thinking to step ahead of you or two. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to catch you going up the middle. 
It's literally my thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm not even saying that because I know what happened. That is why I did this maneuver. Bishop's right there. Something crap. He can totally, totally, totally kill me. He hits me. Does 90 damage. He's, he, his ass is grass. I got his ass. Bam. Six kill. So, that was the replay. Uh, try to think ahead of your opponent. KV1 was going to come up. He's seen me kill tanks ruthlessly. He knows I do around 180, most likely. So, at this instance, you, you kind of anticipate that he might come up that way, but then go out around a different way. But if you look at the screen, I did a total of 15, 31 damage. I only have 350 hit points of mine, so I did around five times. No, a little less than five times my uh, amount of hit points and damage. So that was a good result. I got a nice tanker. And this shows this showcases what the SU-85 is capable of. Its gun turns really quickly. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of arc that it can turn, a lot of degrees that it can turn, but it's quick. It is semi-accurate. Uh, the aim time is okay. Uh, it could be better. But anyways, uh, that was the uh, Ace Tanker and the SC5. Hope you guys enjoyed.